They're fast, they're deadly, and in the Amazon, caimans dominate the waterways. Their hunting style is almost an exact match to Africa's famous crocodiles. Silent approaches, explosive attacks, and powerful jaws capable of taking on prey far bigger than themselves. But here's the twist. Africa, a continent bursting with crocodile species and ideal caiman habitat, has no caimans. Not one. So why didn't these hunters spread across the globe the way crocodiles did? Why are there no caimans in Africa? Crocodilians are an ancient order of semi-aquatic predatory reptiles that first evolved around 83.5 million years ago. They shared the planet with the last of the dinosaurs, so today's species truly are prehistoric. Despite all the mass extinctions and dramatic shifts in climate that followed, they survived and spread into a remarkable range of habitats across the world. Today, they consist of the true crocodiles, the gharial and false gharial, and the alligators and caimans. At first glance, they might all look fairly similar. Armored scales, long tails, and powerful jaws full of teeth. But each group has its own distinct features. Crocodiles tend to have narrower, more V-shaped heads. And when their jaws are closed, you can see both the upper and lower teeth. Alligators and caimans have broader U-shaped snouts, and only the top teeth show when the mouth is shut. Gharials, meanwhile, are the odd ones out, with extremely elongated, almost needle-like jaws that evolved for catching fish with precision. These differences might seem subtle, but they reveal millions of years of separate evolution. Caimans belong to one of the two lineages within the Alligatoridae family, the other being alligators. They are found exclusively in Central and South America living in freshwater habitats such as rivers, swamps, marshes, and flooded forests. Most species are relatively small by crocodilian standards, growing between 1 and 2.5 meters long, or 4 to 8 feet, although some are a little chunkier depending on their habitat and diet. But then, there's the black caiman, the giant of the group, and actually the largest caiman and one of the largest crocodilians in the world. The black caiman can grow to an enormous 4 meters or 13 feet and sometimes larger, with individuals weighing more than 450 kilograms or 990 pounds. They patrol rivers, swamps, wetlands, and lakes of Amazonia, blending almost seamlessly into the dark waters. Although they spend much of their time in the water, they often emerge at night to hunt along the banks. As apex predators, they don't have much to fear in their environment. Their diet is astonishingly varied. Fish, monkeys, sloths, armadillos, capybara, anacondas, caiman, birds, turtles, and even river dolphins. When human communities live nearby, domestic animals can also become prey to the formidable black caiman. Their size, power and opportunistic nature make them one of the most impressive hunters in the Americas. And while caiman live and behave very similarly to the crocodiles found in Africa, none of them exist there today. Not a single species. So why not? The reason is rooted deep in their evolutionary history. Crocodiles and caimans evolved separately from each other, making them a perfect example of divergent evolution. Divergent evolution is the process by which two or more species that share a common ancestor accumulate differences over time, eventually becoming distinct due to adaptations to different environments or selective pressures. Caimans and crocodiles shared a common ancestor around 100 million years ago, long before the continents looked anything like they do today. Back then, this ancestor inhabited Laurasia, the ancient supercontinent that consisted of North America, Europe, and Asia. As the Earth's tectonic plates shifted and Laurasia began to break apart, so did Gondwana in the south, and the continent slowly drifted into their current positions. During this process, the lineage that would eventually give rise to today's true crocodiles spread southwards into Africa and beyond. While the ancestors of alligators and caimans remained in North America, Cut off from each other by oceans and shifting landmasses, these reptile groups evolved separately, adapting to different environments, while still filling similar ecological roles. 
Those alligatoroid ancestors in North America were restricted in their range by their intolerance to salt water. Fresh water was their safe zone, and that limited their distribution to the Americas, where they still remain today. The crocodiles, however, evolved something that dramatically changed their destiny. Specialized salt glands. These salt glands located on the tongue actively excrete excess salt from the crocodile's body. Sodium and chloride ions are pushed out and washed away by the surrounding water or expelled through the nostrils. This adaptation allowed crocodiles to maintain proper salt balance even in brackish or fully marine environments. In other words, they could handle the ocean unlike their alligatoroid cousins. And once the crocodiles could handle the ocean, they could travel far and wide. This unlocked enormous migration potential. Scientists have tracked long-distance journeys undertaken by saltwater crocodiles in the Indo-Pacific, particularly those around Australia. Some individuals have been clocked traveling more than 250 miles, riding the ocean currents from the east side of Australia to the west. Surfing the currents in this way helps them to conserve energy whilst making the remarkable journeys. And why do these crocodiles migrate so far? Usually to search for food, mates, or new territories. Today, true crocodiles inhabit Africa, Asia, Australia, Oceania, and parts of the Americas as well. Meanwhile, it is thought that caimans evolved in North America during the late Cretaceous, roughly 66 million years ago, right around the time of the mass extinction that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs. After surviving that global catastrophe, they gradually moved southwards into Central and South America. Although the two continents weren't directly connected at the time, caimans and their ancestors were able to cross via a chain of islands and freshwater corridors that linked the two landmasses. Then, once they entered South America, they diversified into several species over millions of years, adapting to the rich mosaic of habitats the continent offered. This interchange of species between the North and the South wasn't a one-way pattern. Some caimans are thought to have migrated back into North America and then back into the South. Today's caimans are thought to be descendants of a second wave of migration from North America before geological changes and rising seas eventually cut off the link between the two regions entirely. Now with large open oceans between the two continents, the caimans in the South were stuck there, with no way of migrating again. In South America, caimans filled the ecological niche that crocodiles occupy in Africa. They ended up on separate continents, evolving separately, but behaving in remarkably similar ways and living in very similar types of habitats. Meanwhile in Africa, crocodiles continued to diversify into the five African species that exist today. The Nile crocodile, West African crocodile, West African slender snouted crocodile, Central African slender snouted crocodile, and the African dwarf crocodile. But it raises an interesting thought. If caimans had evolved salt glands, could they have crossed the ocean just like their ancestors once did? It's a fascinating idea, but several conditions would have had to be in place. There would need to be strong environmental pressures such as competition, lack of territory, or the need to find a mate, which would drive caimans to attempt long-distance dispersal. These are the same reasons that push Australia's saltwater crocodiles to swim hundreds of miles today. Without that pressure, the behavior simply wouldn't evolve in the first place. It wasn't until much later, around 7 to 5 million years ago during the late Miocene to early Pliocene, that some crocodiles actually made the journey across the Atlantic from Africa to the Americas. Today's American crocodiles are closely related to the Nile crocodile, but for many years, scientists couldn't explain exactly how or when the connection formed. Then a breakthrough came when researchers uncovered a fossilized skull in the Americas that belonged to an extinct species of ancient African crocodile. It was the missing piece of the puzzle. It was a relation to both the Nile crocodile and the American crocodile, direct evidence that crocodiles had indeed crossed the Atlantic millions of years ago. But the Atlantic those ancient crocodiles faced wasn't the Atlantic we know today. The continents were closer together. The currents were different and the ocean itself may have been far more hospitable to make such a journey. Even if caimans today suddenly developed salt tolerance, the distance between the Americas and Africa is now vastly greater than it was several million years ago. The journey would be incredibly long, incredibly harsh, and almost certainly impossible for them.
The crocodiles that made the crossing back then were also much larger than most caiman species. Their sheer size helped them conserve energy, and their slower metabolisms meant they could go for months with little to no food. They were built for endurance on a scale that caimans simply are not. Even the mighty black caiman, capable of surviving on just a few large meals a year, would almost certainly never make the roughly 3,000-mile Atlantic crossing. They might match Australia's saltwater crocodiles in size, but even the salties, adapted for the open ocean, have only been recorded swimming a couple of hundred miles at most, not thousands. So, in the end, caimans never made it to Africa because biology, geography, and deep evolutionary history kept them firmly rooted in the Americas. And today, the sheer scale of the Atlantic Ocean would keep it that way, even if they tried. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.